What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Rival Charger. The Charger is a flywheel powered semi auto blaster with a built in magazine that holds 12 rounds. Pretty interesting. Let's get into the review. Included is the blaster, rival rounds, and the instructions. Six C type batteries are required for the charger to function. External overview of the charger, starting out with the front. Of course, there's no in strike barrel lug. This is a rival blaster. Above the muzzle are the iron sights, which are super fat and vague, but at least they're there. And in between the sights is a rival style rail. Down only on the right hand side of the blaster is an access door. To open that, you can just pull it open. And that lets you see into the flywheels in case you get a ball jammed up in your flywheels, which is never fun. I did not experience any jams or malfunctions with this blaster, but if you need to get your finger in there, obviously the access door allows you to do that. Moving back to the magazine, which is arguably the most interesting part of this blaster, this is the magazine door right here to open up the magazine. You just pull back on it like this. It reminds me of the Artemis and the Hades with that little hatch. And when you slide back the door, it reveals the magazine opening. So to load, you just push balls in like this. If you've loaded an Artemis or a Hades, the loading door is almost the same. This is a spring fed magazine, but when you pull back this door, you're pulling back the spring and locking it. So when you drop in the ball, it just kind of gravity drops into the magazine. So when loading, I'd recommend tilting the blaster back. If you try to push it this way, the balls will be interfering and it'll just be annoying. So tilt back and then you shove in your rounds. The advertised capacity is 12 rounds, but I can comfortably hold 13 and it still feeds just fine. When you have your magazine loaded up with 12 or 13 balls, you push the magazine door shut and now you're ready to fire. Down to the triggers. The firing trigger feels pretty standard. It's a mechanically operated semi-automatic trigger system. And below the primary trigger is the rev trigger. This is a flywheel powered blaster. So of course you have to hold that for a moment before you fire. And underneath the primary trigger is the trigger safety. So when you activate that, you're not able to rev or pr pull the trigger. And when you want to fire, you just take off the safety. Now down to the grip, which is a little wacky. This whole blaster is a little wacky, but it kind of works. This is a thumbhole stock, but it's really long back here. So I'm able to actually move my wrist a decent amount. Thumbhole stocks aren't my favorite. I think they look super cool, but using them is just a little weird. But this is a decent one as far as thumbhole stocks go. And the grip is also pretty comfortable. I don't think this is as comfortable for a large hand as some other rival blasters. It is a bit cramped, but that's kind of inherent with a thumbhole stock. So that's it for the grip. And behind the grip right here, we have a sling mount. Moving back, back here, we have the battery door. To remove that, you remove the two Phillips screws, and then you install your six C-type batteries. This blaster is not compatible with the rival rechargeable pack of any sort. This is just for, for normal C batteries. And that's it. There's no other moving parts or functional bits in the stock. I would like to point out the stock length is pretty acceptable. The rival blasters are intended for an older audience and it totally fits a bigger body. And on the note of ergonomics, because the alkalines are in the way back of the blaster, it feels like a legitimate bullpup. Bullpups are generally really back heavy. It's really not my favorite, but it is in line with the bullpup, you know, like waiting philosophy, I guess. But it makes it a little weird and it's not my taste. The, the balance is just irregular. It's not conventional. It's a bullpup. Bullpups feel weird. And I say that jokingly because this isn't really a bullpup. The loading mechanism is technically slightly in front of the trigger unit, but it feels like a bullpup. That's the overview of the charger. Let's see it fire. Shooting regular Nerf rival rounds. Now a little quicker. Operating the rival charger was pretty fun. I did not experience any jams and malfunctions through my entire testing procedure. To compare this blaster to others, I put it up on my chronograph and I achieved an average velocity of 98 feet per second, which is on the hotter end for the rival series. So it shoots hard and I did not experience jams and malfunctions. So overall, there's no objective reason to avoid this based on performance. That's the objective information I can provide on the rival charger. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, I'm moderately satisfied with the charger. On paper, it's it works fine. The velocity, there's no jams or malfunctions. It holds 12 rounds, which is similar to other rival blasters, and it's a pretty slim blaster, especially to hold 12 rounds in the built-in magazine, which is pretty cool. However, the weighting and balance of this, I'm not a bullpup guy. I like ARs. I like more conventional loading systems. The weighting in this blaster is just strange. You might like it. It might be for you. This is totally just a personal thing. I don't like the weighting. It doesn't fit me in my play style. If you're going to buy this blaster, it should be for the built-in magazine because you don't want to use external box magazines like with the Hura. The rival Hura is very comparable. It's magazine fed, but it's flywheel powered semi-auto, very similar drivetrain. The ergonomics are more traditional, and it can 
use a rechargeable battery pack, which I think is the biggest selling point of that compared to this. I, alkalines just don't really belong in the Rival series anymore. I feel like the rechargeables are coming in strong and I think you should be on rechargeables or be using a Springer. I don't think you should be using alkalines with the Rival blasters. They're heavy and they just kind of diminish the play experience in my opinion. But loading this magazine is irregular. I can actually load two 12 round Rival mags before I can load this, I timed myself. Because just shoving the balls through this little slot, it's a little weird, loading magazines is faster. The benefit is you don't have to take the magazine out of the blaster to load. However, when you're in firing position, you wanna reload and you pull back on this handle, you've lost spring tension to your magazine, so you can't actually fire right now. Unless you lean the blaster down and you're shooting somebody laying on the floor for some reason. So this blaster only makes sense to me if you don't wanna purchase external box magazines, maybe you don't wanna spend the money, you don't wanna carry them on your body because it's not appropriate for the game, or some other reason, but if you are not opposed to magazines, I would recommend buying the Hura and you can reload much faster because you have to completely reload the magazine every time you can't have one loaded ready to pop in in three seconds. So the charger fills a very particular void in the Rival series. I don't think it's gonna be very popular because I think external box magazines are just better. 12 rounds in an internal magazine just isn't enough to justify the inconvenience of not having external box magazines. The Artemis has a pretty clever design because it carries 30 rounds in a very similar magazine, but 30 is so much different than 12. This makes it, this blaster worthwhile. I think the Artemis definitely fills a very particular role in our hobby. This seems like a redundancy that we didn't ask for and we don't need, but thanks Hasbro for the thought. But honestly, I don't think they were trying that hard with the charger. I mean, they skimped out on the paint. The whole blaster just looks super bland. Every other rival blaster has white paint somewhere and then these little like stripes in the front. Even the little pistol has the little stripes. So it's not the size of the blaster. It's just the normal rival trend to have these cool white stripes up the blaster. This looks so bland because they cheaped out on the, the penny it cost to paint <laughs> three little white stripes across here. They did it with a takedown too. Both of these blasters came out at the same time and they're both super bland. They just look boring for some reason. It's the paint in my opinion. But the paint job is a pretty weak reason to purchase or not purchase a blaster. So I'll stop there. If you're interested in purchasing a rival charger, I'll put a buy link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching bros. And as always, stay tactical.